Hello and welcome to Storytime with Nada and with Boy and Donna. I am Miss Nada. We are still at the Adriatic on vacation with Uncle Joe and Aunt Myra. So let's see what today's story has to tell us. Island bunnies, pheasants and olives. Let the summer fun at the Adriatic continue. It is a lazy, rainy start of a brand new day. Our little friends, Bo and Donna, are slowly moseying about the cozy old stone house and their beloved uncle, aunt, aunt. It has 20 inch thick walls, taking the house, making the house cool in the heat and warm in the winter. When the strong north winds of the Bura blow across the Adriatic and across the Mediterranean Sea, Aunt Myra lit the fireplace to warm up the house and cut out the dampness. Bo and Donna sat themselves in the rustic couch to enjoy their herbal teas, enriched with local honey and some lemon juice from the fresh lemon tree from the lemon tree taken from the lemon tree fresh in front of the house. Aunt Myra, what are all these trees in the back of the house? There are so many. They have so much green fruit. They're little, tiny little balls. Can we eat them? asks Donna. Aunt Myra answers, but telling a whole story of, guess what? The olive tree. It is the black, it is in the back of the house and there is a whole olive garden there with trees loaded with olive fruit to be harvested in the fall. And yes, you can eat those berries once they are ripe, of course. Now they wouldn't taste too good. Yet you know what we do with most of these beautiful olives when they are harvested because we cannot eat all of them. There are so many as you can see. The community has an ancient olive press machine where everyone goes after they collect their extra their olives and bring them there. People come with baskets and barrels filled with delicious juicy green olives or black olives just to make them into what? Olive oil. You love eating the salads and the meals I make which is mostly because of this precious olive oil from our very own olive trees. Can we go and visit this old olive press and see how it's done, please? begs Bo. Let's ask Uncle Joe. I am sure he can make it happen, answers Aunt Myra. Now, do you want to see what that looks like? Well, here is a press. You see those big stones there? Right? They are used to crush the olives. And this is how it is when it's inside a building where Bo and Donna are going to go and visit. And in ancient times, they used to have a donkey pull the lever to move those stones. So they would go in circles around and around and around until all the olives have been ground. Uh, it's a tedious job, I know, but somebody got to do it. And this donkey doesn't look unhappy, does he? He's, he has a good master. And this is what it looks like when the olives are inside the stone and the big stone is crushing them from above. Isn't that fun? Okay, let's see what the story tells us. As the rain let up a bit, they all ventured outside to visit the olive garden, pick some fresh figs from the fig tree and get some grapes from the trellis that was loaded with fruit hanging off of it. Oh, look, Donna, there is a whole bunny family feasting on the olives and fruits that fell from the tree, quietly whispers Bo, just as they are turning around to return to the house. Suddenly, right in front of them, a bird flutters into the distance. It's a beautiful, colorful bird. What was that? asked Donna. Oh, that 
that is a pheasant. We have many of them here. And tonight, we're actually going to have one for dinner. You will see how tasty they are. Because you know why? Ask Aunt Myra both. Bo and Donna shake their heads. Well, they constantly feast on our olives. And as you know, olive oil makes everything taste simply delicious, says Aunt Myra. Yes, that makes sense, comments Donna. With bowls loaded with freshly picked fruit and a basket filled with fresh greens and veggies from the garden, they return to the cozy rock house with its lit fireplace, giving it a very special warm feeling. Can you imagine that? Just as Bo and Donna settle in to read the books they brought with them, as well as relive all the adventures from their visit so far, their Uncle Joe announces his arrival. Uncle Joe, Uncle Joe, can we go and visit the olive press in the old mill house, please? Bo asks with great excitement. Wait, wait, young man, what are you talking about? Responds a surprised Uncle Joe. He has no clue. Let me explain, chimes in Aunt Myra. Today, we walked through our olive garden, picked fresh figs and grapes, as well as gathered veggies for tonight's dinner, which is going to be a special pheasant meal. As you know, our young visitors are very inquisitive, which led us to questions about making olive oil. Ah, now I understand, says Uncle Joe with a smile. Let's go. I just saw my friend Mark, who is the man in charge of the olive press activities. Are you ready? Yes, of course we are. Let's go. Right in the center of town, they find Mr. Mark, who generously invites them into the old mill house where the big old olive press is located, just like I showed you in the picture. There are two huge flat stones affixed to a uh, control portion with a long handle sticking out of it, with two huge wheels grinding upon a big stone on the bottom and an indentation, an indentation at the base of it. You know why? because that's where the olive oil is going to flow out from. Wow, Mr. Mark, this is so big and looks very heavy, states Donna. Yes, my child, they have to be as heavy to be able to grind the many, many olives people bring to us to make olive oil. And this has been going on for centuries, answers Mr. Mark. Who or what makes these stones move? And where does the oil come out from? Asks Bo. Well, in the many years past, good old donkeys did the job, just like I showed you on the picture, remember? By moving it in a circle for a long time. Come here, let's all try to move these stones by pushing this lever forward, all together. Okay, ready? Suggests Uncle, uh, Mr. Mark. They all get behind this long lever and start pushing and pushing. And eventually, they get it to move the stone just a tad. That's how heavy they are. Oh, no, this is so hard, exclaims Bo, huffing and puffing. Yes, son, it surely is. And that's why today we are using electricity, which makes it go so much smoother and easier an electric motor, confirms Mr. Mark. Then he shows them the carved out channel where the oil freely flows into a big bucket topped with a mesh to extract the solid slush left behind. Since the summer is not the time to grind olives into oil, there was none to sample yet. They all were invited to, to the to come back in the fall to witness it all live when it's happening. And of course they agreed. Uncle Joe's friend Mark 
invited them into the stone room adjacent where there was a big old wooden table upon which there was a piece of homemade bread and some sheep cheese from Mark's flock, as well as a green bottle filled with last year's good olive oil and some marinated olives as well to taste. Yum, Mr. Mark, this is so tasty. Can I get some to bring to Aunt Myra so she can taste it too? Asked Donna. But of course, my child, my wife already prepared a package for you all to take with you, said Mr. Mark. With special gifts in their hands, off they went to share the adventure and all that they learned today with Aunt Myra. Have you ever felt that way when going on a vacation and visiting a special family member somewhere in the countryside or at the ocean side? It surely is something very special to look forward to whenever the opportunity arises. Would you like to share your story with me? This is Bo and Donna's story. <laughs>